Before starting this video, consider joining my new Discord server and becoming a Patreon. There are definitely some really awesome people on this Discord, and we talk about new spoilers and some deck advice. We do have an awesome time on there, so come by and check it out. I do want to give a shout out to my supporters on Patreon. We do have Toads of Elk, who is a Galta tier member. So if you want to help the channel, please consider joining my Patreon. There are some great benefits for you. So with that out of the way, let's get into this week's video. So what's going on YouTube? This is Devin coming back at you with another video today on Pub Stomp MTG. Glad to have you here. Today I wanted to do a little bit of a different deck tech today because I wanted to share with you guys some of my personal favorite decks that I've made over the past couple years and kind of give them out to you. There are some people that requested my Coma Cosmo Serpent deck and there's definitely no better time than now to present that to you because of God of War Ragnarok. I've been playing God of War Ragnarok ever since the second one came out. I tried playing the first one and went through it and then played all the other ones and then when the new one showed up with the Norse mythology I was absolutely hooked. I played through God of War Ragnarok and it was an absolutely amazing game. If you haven't checked it out yourself I recommend it 100%. But enough about God of War let's talk about Coma Cosmo Serpent because that's what you came here for. So Coma the Cosmo Serpent is inspired from the Norse mythology and the Midgard Serpent called Jormungandr. Coma does have some amazing abilities. First of all if this spell can't be countered when you're ramping so hard into a spell like this with seven mana cost total you want to make sure it can't be countered and at the beginning of each upkeep create a 3-3 blue serpent creature token named Coma's Coil. But wait there's more! Sacrifice another serpent, choose one, tap target permanent, its activated abilities can't be activated this turn, or Coma Cosmo Serpent gains indestructible until end of turn. Even though this commander is 7 mana cost, man it doesn't take control of the board when it enters the battlefield. However, we do want to get him out on the battlefield very consistently, we want to make sure we have a great ramp package in this deck list. I usually try to keep to 2 mana cost ramp spells, I mean sometimes I'll have more depending on what they do, but for example Nature's Lore and 3 Visit are definitely the best ramp packages for us. Being able to get any forest untapped onto the battlefield, you can get your dual land like a breeding pool, is just absolutely incredible in this kind of deck. Farseek and Rampant Growth are also great options too because we want to make sure we get lands on the battlefield just for cheap mana as well. I would say I really do like Sky Shroud Claim because after you play Sky Shroud Claim on turn 4, turn 5 you'll definitely be able to play Coma Cosmo Serpent after that because you can search your library for two forest cards and put them on the battlefield. So kind of like uh, Nature Nature's Lore and three visits as well. Just provide that extra boost of mana we do need for Coma. We do also want to make sure that we get some good card draw options in here so that we can get a lot of card advantage. Because we're making so much Coma coils, we can have Toski Bearer Secrets and Oron Frostfang in here whenever they attack. Uh, and when they deal combat damage, we get to draw a card. No other stipulation right there. Plus, with Oron Frostfang's ability, we can make all our creatures have death touch when they're attacking. So honestly, I feel like we could draw so much cards off of this creature. It's so insane. It's hard to narrow down one specific card that draws us the most cards because so many of them draw us cards in different ways. For example, Skull Clam could attach to one of our Coma Coils. We sacrifice it with Coma's ability. We draw two cards and we also have that ability of either tapping it a permanent or giving Coma indestructible. Say for example, we don't have any cards in our hands and we have four Coma Coils. We could have all those attached to Skull Clamp, sacrifice them and gain eight cards off of that. Another card draw engine that I absolutely have to include in here is Kindred discovery. And you could essentially do the same thing with Elemental Bond here too because whenever a creature with power 3 or greater enters the battlefield under your control you could draw a card. But essentially with each of these cards we could possibly draw 4 cards per round depending on how much players are playing. To be honest if we have any of these cards on the battlefield we're going to be able to draw so much cards it's so ridiculous how much card advantage we're going to get over our opponents. So let's get into the meat of the deck and the reason why this is so amazing. This is a Coma clone deck. This is a very fun deck that I've played over and over again and I never get bored of because of the gameplay and the possibilities it does create. On this part of the video, I do want to focus more on creatures that could make the legend rule not apply. For example, we do have Sakashima of a Thousand Faces, Sakashima the Imposter, Spark Double, and Inrakuses. I cannot pronounce that correctly, but Vile Duplication. All these in a way can make another clone of Koma Cosmo Serpent without having the worry to sacrifice one or the other because the legend rule does not apply. We could further our game plan by cloning the clones. We want to 
make sure that we could go around the legendary rules so that we can make more clones of coma overwhelming our opponents with so much coils and so much comas by themselves so i added some more clones like phyrexian metamorph glass pool mimic and clever impersonator this way we could get some additional clones of coma or should i say the clone that doesn't worry about the legendary rule there's also a nifty spell that i really like for a lot of utility obviously sublime epiphany does make a creature token that's a copy of a creature you control but it does have more abilities that you could use like countering spells countering activated abilities or triggered abilities returning a non-land permanent to its owner's hand target player draws a card this is just an incredible card in this list because we're going to be ramping up so much so the six mana cost is not going to be so much of a worry for us however i do want to share with you some things that i've learned while playing coma because it's one thing to make a deck tech but with experience that i have played with this card is really awesome i really like a lot of the interactions you could do with this list one experience i did have was more recent with the pirated copy that was a new card from jumpstart 2022 i thought to myself maybe i should make a copy of that clone with sakashima of a thousand faces but instead i actually copied a comus coil and because of that it has that ability stapled onto the pirated copy whenever this creature or another creature with the same name deals combat damage to a player you draw a card because i already had about like three comas on the battlefield two clones and one the original i had about 15 coma coils the pirated copy doesn't care about being the specific target of that clone it matters about the name so comas coil all triggers when it deals combat damage and i drew so much cards that game it was absolutely insane with just pirated copy another interaction i do want to share with you has happened a couple times here and there when i played coma as well in one game i did have ovar the all form on the battlefield and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell if it targets one or more permits you control create a token that's a copy of one of those permanents so you can probably see where this is going but for example somebody tried to infernal graphs one of my clones of coma that was sakashima of a thousand faces instead of trying to sacrifice another serpent i played a spell to target sakashima of a thousand faces like tamio safekeeping which gave it hexproof and indestructible because orvar saw that Orvar made another token copy of Sakashima of a Thousand Faces and when it entered the battlefield I made another Koma Cosmo Serpent. I do pack a little bit of those spells like Tamiya Safekeeping to protect Koma but it's also a really great ability to have Orvar the all form on the battlefield as well to make more Komas. So that way we can put our opponents into a Koma as well. But that's going to do it for me guys. Thank you guys so much for coming by and watching this video on Koma Cosmo Serpent. This is definitely one of the more favorite commanders I've played over the years. It's very fun to play. I have played in a lot of high power games i would say overall it does really good as a control piece because of the ramp package i actually get coma up pretty consistently i do have a big amount of ramp packages for example like chrome Mox, jeweled lotus and all that stuff weirdly enough one time i did get him down on turn one i had that fairy tale christmas hand where i had a jeweled lotus mana crypt chrome Mox, and an island in hand with another card to pitch to that chrome Mox. i do want to thank you all so much for coming by and watching these videos i can't believe how much support i've been given so far let me know if you want to hear some more about some of the decks i play and some of the interactions that i've seen with them and who knows i might just make a whole video dedicated to just decks i do have i have around 18 decks i do have and running and operational if you do want to hear about those let me know down below in the comments and with that out of the way thank you for stopping by